In this video, I will show you how to create a migration batch in Office 365 Admin Center for performing cutover migration. And not only this, we will also cover in this video, like, of course, creating a migration batch, configuring migration batch, connecting to on-premise exchange server, like in my case, it's on-premise exchange 2016 server. Uh, after performing sync, once everything is synced, user information is there in, in Office 365 uh, portal and their mailbox data is all synced. We will assign license to it. We may, re read, we may need to rerun the migration batch to rectify any errors or to resynchronize if you feel that there is a difference now, like on-premise mailboxes have more mail, mail data than uh, the cloud one that you can always read on it by default it will run every 24 hours and do the sync but you can run it early sometimes you may, may need to rerun it to rectify some errors we will have a review of migration batch report and the csv file that's been generated after the migration batch and i will show you a technique to bulk resetting password for all your users of course you could do through exchange powershell uh, connect to exchange online through powershell and do it but there's an easy way to to do it via gui as well then if you don't need to sync data anymore and your your users are, are provisioned there the mailbox are synced to a cloud and let's say you have decided now it's time for final switch over or cut over from on-premise to cloud then you will delete the migration batch once you delete the migration batch there will be no more synchronization and after that you need to add office 365 related dns records in your public dns zone for your domain so that all the client can get pointed to right servers for off related to office 365 to get appropriate services like exchange online skype for business sharepoint and all that okay so this is the agenda this is are the topics that we will cover in this video and of course later on we will cover some other stuff like in other videos like configuring uh or reconfiguring outlook profile so that it doesn't point to on-premise exchange server it points to it should points to uh, office 365 as well as configuring ad connect to synchronize the password from your active directory between an active directory and office 365 that will be another video so let's start with creating a migration batch so what i'm going to do now i'm going to create the migration batch and for that under Exchange Admin Center under Office 365 portal, recipients migration, and I will click and say migrate to Exchange Online. And I will choose option number three, which is cut over migration. And because I want to move all mailbox at once over a period of days, maximum of 2000 mailboxes can be migrated they say but ideally I would say if you have like 300 or less that this is the best option to go okay uh, next email address or for one of the user whose own premise mailbox will be migrated so I would say administrator at it sense.net and it sense Administrator and the password. And next, now it will try to detect the migration endpoint, which is uh, RPC or HTTPS. It was unable to detect mine, but I will provide it manually. So mine is itsense.com. Oh, sorry, not, not net. RPC proxy is that 
FQDN of RPC proxy IP sense dot net authentication. I'll choose basic and domain admins. Let's see next. And I will say the batch name IP sense net migration. Next, after the batch is complete, to whom you like to send? Okay, I'm I'm fine with it. Um, and as you can see right now it is syncing and it detects so far 17 options and if we see the details Right now, there is nothing much. So it will take a little while, while performing sync, and I will resume the video when it is proceed further. Just one quick thing that while it's syncing, and now if I go to the details now something appeared and you can see it's right now validating before there was nothing here but now it's time to validate so started to validate and again we have to wait a little bit and I'll be back shortly okay the status now it's changed from validating to provisioning and as you can see right now it's provisioning those stuff so if i go to mailboxes here and you can see my mailboxes which were on premise now i'm able to see them in office 365 however it's not done yet it's still provisioning let's see the groups and i got my groups as well so if i just show you real quick my on-premise exchange which is this one see this is my exchange which is a local host as you can see exchange 2016 server these are my recipients they are mailboxes for local and these are the groups right and these are the mailboxes which were local but now i'm provisioning those mailboxes to office 365 yep awesome so we wait for the finish and It's still provisioning, so wait for the finish, and when it's done, I'll be back with you. Okay, so let's go to the migration and see. Yes, it's synced and it's completed. Synced with errors. Well, honestly, it's, it's sort of a false positive because I have checked that. Uh, Sync mailbox 10 of 17, right? Finalized 5 of 17. Then when it says finalized, it means it's talking about those groups. And fail mailbox 2. If I check the details, it says complete because you see that's a group. And these are the mailbox saint saint 
Although for two mailbox it did show me fail, but I checked those mailbox and it seems okay. And that was the number of contents anyway that I was expecting in that. And you can see four four and some of them some little bit more contents. So it's totally expected. So for me it all looks good and okay. That mailbox synced and I got this confirmation email as well. Actually, when I run that and I just left it, I slapped and I did my own, do my own things. I checked it today and it was all processed. It took just one hour, 17 minutes. Of course, I have a test environment, not very uh, fast environment, not very fast dedicated link, not dedicated exchange server, it's all just test. My internet is not very greatest, of course, but in production environment, it could take more, it could take less because the production environment, your mailboxes will be big, so it's better to do it over the weekend or after hours. And which approach you will take, it depends. Would you like to move your old data into PST and just provision the mailboxes, or you want to migrate all data at once? It all depends. So, I'm so time will vary depends on the size of our organization and the size of mailboxes and of course when outlook profile will be need to be recreated so that recreation when it will connect to all office 365 it will generate an ost and that will also take some time let me just show you real quick if i go to office 365 portal and see show you active users here I can see all the users but by filter it to unlicensed users these are the users that are provisioned right right now license is not assigned to them so that's the next thing you do you assign a license to those users which are not licensed of course so that they can use Office 365 mailbox Another thing is, of course, you need to, as all data has been cut over, all mailboxes have been synced here. Users profile needs to be recreated. Uh, a temporary password needs to be set. Their act, act, this account has nothing to do with their Active Directory password yet. If you want to use the same password as Active at on-premise Active Directory, then you need to configure uh, AD Connect, you know, to synchronize the password. And again, there are two approaches. You want to go for single sign-on or same sign-on. Uh, in small organizations, same sign-on is typically okay. And that's what I will demonstrate in one of the video as well. Uh, user accounts are here. So, of course, license, you have to assign, for example, depends on the location, or sorry, depends on the license which is available. For example, I have Office 365 Business Premium available. I'm using the evaluation, of course, of Office 365 to demonstrate this. And in evaluation, it gives you 25 licenses. So I can select, for example, the country. And And product assign. Close. And as you can see, Office 365 Business Premium. So once you assign this way to all users, you can even select all of them and do it in one shot if it requires. For example, I can select them. And edit product license and add Office 365, add, and it's adding the product to user, we are signing a license. OK, 
Okay, close. Uh -huh. come on. All right. So I have assigned the license to everything and that's what I wanted to do and so if I filter the users to licensed users and you can see they are all licensed now. Okay. So we have cut we, we migrated all user accounts and their mailboxes. Well user accounts are still there in Active Directory. Course, they have on-premise active directory. We provisioned their mailboxes in Office 365. Of course, we have an on-premise exchange server still. We have to get rid of that. We have to recreate Outlook profile. We may like to sync the password, the AD password, with Office 365 to the user. They have to remember just one password. And that's what I will show you in one of the next videos in the series. So for the time being, I will call out stop on this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. One more point I would like to add up here that if I go to Admin Center Exchange and go back to the migration task, right? To sync with errors, correct? So if I go to details and, and check error I said it's false positive because I was expecting the same number of uh, items and I know it's all good I have checked that mailbox and account and uh, uh, mailbox being provision and I have already assigned a license to it because if you see this error message okay and I would like to show you one article here related to Office 365. I think it was something. Yeah, this one. This is the message I received, and 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 what it says that sometimes it could be a false positive because. The migration service may be sometimes unable to retrieve it or manage it or let's say it takes a long time to complete so it thinks that it's a problem but it may not be a problem so that's so it's assumed that maybe it has failed but actually it doesn't and migration of data works as expected and that's in my case though although it feel that it's, it's failed but it's not failed for those two mailboxes other thing you can do you can again rerun the migration wizard and just make sure that things goes okay uh, you can always rerun by default it will run every 24 hours to sync mailboxes again with the cloud so let's say within 24 hours more messages has been added to them to those mailboxes those messages will be you know replicated or synced with the mailboxes in Office 365 until you delete the migration batch. Once you delete the migration batch, no more sync will occur anymore. It's a 10 user at a time and that's what it does. And, and for example, if we go here in associated endpoint properties, Maximum concurrent migration 20 and maximum concurrent incremental syncs are 10. We can change those values here as well. Okay. So that's the point I want to mention and hopefully it makes sense now. And thank you. And here it is. As I mentioned again, it was false positive. If you rerun it, it should go away and that's what I did I rerun the batch and as you can see 17 12 sinks 5 finalized failed 0 if I go to details 
completed of course these are the those these are those groups distribution groups and the rest all saved see before Amdurston and A. John have a problem, but now it's synced. And and Mark Nicholas synced. So it will go away, as I said earlier. It just takes time. Ultimately, you can see there is no error in uh, listed under status. This warning will also go away. It will be like this. I've already assigned license to it. Once again, if I refresh, see, it's all good. Sync mailbox 12 out of 17, finalized 5 out of 17, failed mailboxes. Yeah. Awesome. What's up? That's it. And we will proceed in next video, which will be like configuring Outlook, I guess. Okay, so take it easy. As I mentioned in my previous video about this confirmation email, and as you can see, here I have an option to download the migration report. If you click on this migration, download migration report, it will download a CSV file and I have already downloaded it but if I open it again as you can see this is the, this is the detail about those mailboxes which has been migrated and synced total items password previously set uh, they have been assigned sort of a temporary password, so when they will try to log into Office 365, it will tell them to change their password or specify a new password. They can type the same password at Active Directory, but the problem is, in future, if their Active Directory password gets changed, Office 365 password has nothing to do with it. They are totally two different passwords, so it won't change automatically. So I have to do it manually or vice versa. So, you may like to go for an option like a password sync between your Active Directory and Office 365 so users don't get confused. Whenever the password is set in Active Directory, they will use the same password for Office 365 emails. So, whenever their password gets changed here, it will get changed over there as well. And that's what I will cover in one of the videos in which I will configure AD Connect. Okay? So, in some migrations, you may see a password value here as a temporary password that has been assigned. In some cases, it just appear like this. There are different debates are there and different possibilities, but you have nothing to worry about. You can even do a simple way that you can reset the password for all your users. Don't forget, although you have Exchange Admin Center, Sorry, that's an old one. Uh, sorry, okay. If you have your Exchange Admin Center here to manage all your uh, recipients, but you can still use PowerShell. All you have to do uh, install appropriate PowerShell modules onto your computer. You can remotely connect to Office 365 environment and manage your Exchange using PowerShell or Exchange Online using PowerShell as you do with your on-premise Exchange. And that's usually a very quick way to do many things, especially if you want to do bulk operations. Right, so... Nothing to worry. One option is, of course, you can select all of them and you have select reset password. This way you can reset password for all of them in bulk. You don't have to use PowerShell. Maybe you might assign temporary password to them and then you just give them away 
through some text message or still using their outlook as as their their mailbox is already or their outlook is already pointing to on premise exchange you may already uh, that's something you may like to give them in advance okay when you configure your outlook for office 365 this is the password you should use for future right and then change your password so there are many possibilities so we will see in next couple of videos like how to configure out while your online on-premise exchange server is still there, how to create a new profile to make it point to Office 365 and make sure it don't point to on-premise exchange anymore. And second thing, that AD Connect for password synchronization. So, cheers. Once you are certain that you don't want to sync it anymore and you want to go to final step, which is adding DNS records of for Office 365 related to your domain and recreating user profiles, then all you have to do, you can always go back to migration, uh, select the migration batch and delete it. Once you delete the migration batch, that's it. Now there will be no more synchronization between on-premise exchange and office 365 so if you add data a new data or new messages to the mailbox on-premise mailboxes those messages will not be replicated keep this in mind so do it as a final step once it's almost time to switch users to office 365 okay of course once you have decided second step would be the domain thing because itsense.net dns management these records needs to be added into the public dns so that office 365 services can be uh, can be set for clients so that the client make a query to itsense.net external or DNS zones, it can connect to right Office 365 servers to get Exchange Online service, Sky for Business service, or OneDrive service, and so on. Again, as I said, two options add the record manually or add the DNS record for me. If I say add manually, it will generate a list of records like I've shown earlier. And I'll show you there will be lots of records that you need to add manually. Easiest option is, of course, provide the credentials. Let it add, let it add DNS record by itself. And after that, you can change the password. Simple. And you can see here. If you want to go for manual record creation, that's what you need to do for all those services for exchange for sky for business and all the sharepoint you know <coughs> so. and that's what so i can go back and i can say this option i will go proceed next with this option and then i will pause the video of course and I will continue my install. So they have I have provided the credentials and they have done the DNS settings for me. And as you can see, setup complete. All good. So now appropriate records are set in the public DNS of itsense.net, which are pointing to appropriate Office 365 servers who will provide Exchange online services, Skype for business services, and many other services related to itsense.net. So I don't have to do anything now. All I have to do is just sit back, relax. No, actually not. What we need to do is to reconfigure user Outlook profile so that it now it points to Office 365, not to on-premise exchange, okay?